Hi guys, welcome back to my lectures. In this session, we'll be studying about uh, inhibition of enzyme activities or enzyme inhibition. So when you hear enzyme an enzyme inhibitor, uh, those molecules which blocks or inhibits enzyme activity. So all molecules that blocks enzymatic activities are called the inhibitors. So any substance that diminish the velocity or affect the rate, uh, diminish the velocity of enzyme catalyzed reaction are called the inhibitors. And we have two general classes of enzyme inhibitors. We have two types of enzyme inhibitors. We have reversible reversible inhibitors and the irreversible inhibitors so here is the flow chart which shows the subtypes of these enzyme inhibitors as you can see we have uh, this represents the enzyme inhibitors uh, we have two major types of enzyme inhibitors we have reversible inhibitors and the irreversible inhibitors the reversible inhibitors has also the subtypes uh, the competitive or substrate analog uh, reversible inhibitors we have non-competitive and competitives we shall see these uh, subtypes and they are real examples in in case of irreversible uh, inhibitors we have the those which are substrate analog or affinity labels uh, group specific irreversible inhibitors and the suicide or mechanism based inactivations or mechanism based inactivators. So this represents the classes of enzyme inhibitors. So by starting, let us check, uh, start discussing about the, the first type, the first class of enzyme inhibitors, reversible inhibitors. So the word reversible inhibitors are those, reversi are those inhibitors which binds non-covalently bind non-covalently with uh, the enzymes non-covalently non it means these inhibitors binds with, en with enzymes using non-covalent bonds uh, example the ionic bonds van der Waal forces uh, hydrogen bonds uh, etc or hydrophobic interactions etc those bonds which are non-covalent does not involve the sharing of electrons so and these inhibitors are easily being restored uh, removed from the enzymes because uh, the the binding or the interaction between the inhibitor and the enzyme is always reversible so reversible inhibitors bind to enzymes through non-covalent bonds the non-covalent bonds include the hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, uh, van der Waal forces, and the hydrophobic interactions. And the activity of the inhibited enzyme, the activity of the inhibited enzyme is restored fully when the inhibitor is removed from the system. So the reversible inhibitors are those inhibitors which bind with the enzymes using non-covalent bonds, and the activity of inhibited enzymes can be restored fully. Uh, when the inhibitor is removed from the system here in reversible inhibitors as we have said we have three subtypes of reversible inhibitors we have competitive or substrate analog inhibitors we have non-competitive inhibitors and the uncompetitive inhibitors so let us go quickly the competitive or substrate analog inhibitors competitive means competition here the substrate and the inhibitor are structurally related so they compete to the the same active site and this can be uh, removed or prevented by increasing the concentration of the substrate because the substrate and the inhibitors compete to the active site so the competitive the competitive inhibitor is usually structural analog of the substrate structural related 
uh, with the substrate. The chemical structure of the inhibitor closely resembles that of the substrate and it binds to the enzymes at the active site, forming the enzyme inhibitor complex uh, rather than enzyme substrate complex. So the key difference here is that uh, the, the formation, when the inhibitor binds to the active site, when the inhibitor outcompete the substrate, it forms the enzyme inhibitor complex, which does not lead to the uh, formation of the product. And there will be no enzymatic catalysis, no enzymatic reactions. Uh, so, but in case of enzyme substrate complex, when the substrate outcompete the inhibitors, it will lead to the formation of enzyme substrate complex. And this is the one that finally converted into the uh, free enzyme and the and the product. So the key the key thing the key concept to capture here is that the competitive uh, reversible inhibitor uh, are those inhibitors which are structurally related to the substrate, so they compete to the active site. And upon binding, they form enzyme inhibitor complex, which cannot further release the lead to the production of the product or cannot allow the formation and the, 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 the enzymatic catalysis and finally the formation of the products. As you can see from this uh, diagram here we have uh, firstly the enzyme uh, react with the substrate uh, to reversibly form enzyme substrate complex in case that is the substrate has out competed the inhibitors. So we just if we assume that in the case of the substrates are to compete the inhibitors, so the substrate binds to the active site of the enzymes to form the enzyme substrate complex, which finally releases the product and the free enzyme. But in the case the when inhibitors are to compete the substrates, this forms uh, enzyme inhibitor complex. This is the inactive. This complex is inactive, cannot go further uh, to release the products, will not undergo any enzymatic reactions. So the, the, the inhibitor will just remain in the active sites and no further products uh, will be formed, as you can see from this uh, diagrammatic representation. Uh, this E represents the enzyme as substrate I the inhibitors. Uh, as you can see, the substrate and the inhibitors are structurally related, so they compete uh, with the uh, with the active site. And the sh as you can see, the shape of the active site resembles the shape of the of both the substrate and the inhibitors. So, if the substrate out compete the inhibitors, it will it will lead to the formation of enzyme substrate complex, and this will undergo catalytic reactions. Uh, to form a free enzyme to release a free a free enzyme and the and the product but if the inhibitors out to compete the substrate it will lead to the formation of inactive enzyme inhibitor complex and this will not undergo any catalytic activities uh, to release enzymes and the products uh, many of these have been said Uh, that the binding of the inhibitors cannot uh, lead to the uh, breakdown of the complex into the products. Uh, when both the substrate and this type of inhibitor are present, they compete for the same binding site of the enzymes, as I have said. Uh, the inhibition could be overcome by increasing the substrate concentration. So this is the key one. How can we overcome this inhibition? Uh, we can overcome this kind of uh, competitive inhibition, uh, which is uh, the, the type of reversible inhibition, by increasing the substrate concentration. Because if the uh, issue is competition, if we increase the concentration of the substrate, then we we will out compete the the, 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 the binding, uh, the competition uh, with inhibitors. So the other key concept to capture here is in, in this type of uh, reversible inhibition, in competitive inhibition, uh, the KM, the Mikael is maintained constant, increases, whereas the VMAX remains unchanged.
So as you have said that to overcome this type of inhibition, we need to increase the substrate concentration. And I remember we said that the KM, the Mikael is maintaining constant. This represents the concentration of the substrate uh, at which the rate of enzyme catalyzed reaction is half of its maximum velocity. So this type of inhibition affects only the, the KM, but that does not affect the Vmax. So in a competitive inhibition, uh, the KM increases, whereas the Vmax remain unchanged. So the competitive inhibitor uh, inhibition affects only the KM, uh, but not, does not affect the Vmax. And this is the graph, the graphical representation of what we have said. With a competitive, with no inhibitor, this is, this is uh, I mean, uh, remember that this is uh, line with a back plot. It's the reciprocal of a Michaelis maintain equation. Uh, so uh, before the inhibition, this represents the original line, the green line. And this was it's the KM value, and this was the Vmax. So after the competition, uh, after the inhibition with competitive inhibitor, as you can see, the KM has been shifted toward the right. That's why we say the KM has increased while the Vmax remain unaffected. So the classical examples is the competition inhibition of succinated dehydrogenase. Uh, and this is, and this, uh, is the thing that we need, we normally expect from the students uh, to explain the, the theories and they give uh, a real, a real, uh, a real examples from a uh, physiological, from the biological system. For example, here we have an example of competitive inhibition. Uh, the competition, the competitive inhibition of succinated dehydrogenase. These are the enzymes of citric acid cycle. And the succinated dehydrogenase is competitively inhibited by malonate. The malonate is structurally re related to succinate. So the malonate competitively inhibit succinated dehydrogenase. Uh, succinated dehydrogenase, and as I have said, this is one of the examples of the enzymes of citric acid cycle of the Krebs cycle. Uh, succinate dehydrogenase is inhibited by malonate which resembles succinate. So because of the structural resemblance of the malonate with the succinate, so the malonate out compete succinate and they block uh, the active site of succinate dehydrogenase which normally accept, uh, accept succinate for uh, catalysis to occur. And then we have also many drugs uh, which act as a competitive inhibitors, as we are going to see, we have, for example, the sulfonamide. This sulfonamide uh, is used the, as an antimicrobial, uh, antimicrobial drug. The as, as sulfonamide, this is the structural analog of, of P-aminobenzoic acid. It resembles the P-aminobenzoic acid, PABA. Uh, and this uh, sulfonamide because it is structurally resembles uh, it is structurally related to p aminobenzoic acid uh, which is a substrate of teratoid synthetase and uh, this enzyme requ is required for the synthesis of folic acid in the microorganisms and uh, remember the folic acid uh, is very essential in the biosynthesis of nucleotides uh, uh, in the biosynthesis of nucleotides. So the sulfonamides, the antimicrobial drugs, inhibit teratoid synthase, uh, which is required for synthesis of folic acid in microorganisms. And the folic acid is very used is very useful in the formation of nucleotides and the nucleotides are the ones that uh, uh, are used in proteins in, in, in the DNA synthesis during replication and uh, cell divisions. So uh, when the sulfonamide inhibit these enzymes or competitively inhibit the, these enzymes, there will be no further synthesis of folic acids. So, uh, consequently, eventually there will be no further synthesis of nucleotides, the purines and the thiamine. So, there will be no further growth of pathogenic organisms. So, this is a real example uh, the, the the action of sulfonamide antimicrobial uh, drug. Another one, we have isoniazide or isonicotinic acid hydrazine. 
INH this is the anti tuberculosis drug anti uh, anti tuberculosis drug uh, is structurally is structurally related to a nicotinamide uh, structurally related to nicotinamide and uh, this is the essential substrate for the enzymes uh, that is synthesizes uh, NAD and nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide these are the coenzymes that are very uh, useful are the coenzymes and the electron carriers uh, which are very useful in enzymatic in in the body uh, in 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 the in the living systems so the INH interferes with the biosynthesis of NAD and therefore restricts the growth of organisms that cause tuberculosis so this represents an example of competitive uh, competitive inhibition so because this INH uh, structurally resembles nicotinamide and uh, this nicotinamide is the substrate for those enzymes that it synthesizes uh, NAD and uh, if they are blocked uh, they are inhibited so there will be no further uh, synthesis of these coenzymes these electron carriers so there will be no further growth of uh, those organisms that cause tuberculosis we have another example here this naturally occurring naturally occurring drug uh, the dicumaro the dicumaro this is an anticoagulant drug a structure related to vitamin K. It is a naturally occurring uh, drug, an uh, anticoagulant drug, a uh, structure similar to vitamin K. And this inhibits the vitamin K activity, uh, which inhibits the formation of pro prothrombin, the uh, blood, clotting, uh, blood clotting factors. And uh, remember that the dicumaro. Uh, as we have said, competitively inhibit vitamin K, epoxide reductase, uh, which normally recycles vitamin K. So after the inhibition of this uh, vitamin K epoxide reductase, there will be no no further there are or there will be the depletion depletion of active vitamin K in the blood. So eventually, there will be no further formation of active uh, blood clotting factors. For example, the prothrombin. And several uh, coagulant proteins. Uh, so the dicumaro uh, was discovered in, in moldy wet sweet clover hay as the cause of natural occurring bleeding disease in kettles. So this is natural uh, occurring drug that uh, competitively inhibit uh, the reductase enzymes that it recycles vitamin K activity. So it will lead to depletion of vitamin K. Uh, which is very essential uh, coenzymes for the synthesis uh, of uh, blood clotting factors including the the prothrombin so the second type of reversible inhibitor the, the second subtype of reversible inhibitor we have non competitive inhibitors the non competitive inhibitors as the name implies, this type of inhibition, uh, no competition occurs between the substrate. The key point is that no competition, no competition occurs between the substrate and the inhibitor. And the inhibitor is usually structurally different from the substrate. This is the key difference between the non-competitive inhibitors and the competitive inhibitors. No competition in non-competitive inhibitors and the inhibitors are not structurally related to the substrate. So it binds at the site of the enzymes molecule other than the substrate binding site. So this this inhibitor this inhibitor binds to other site other than the substrate binding site. And there is no competition between the inhibitor and the substrate. So since the inhibitor and the substrate it may bind at the different sites so the formation of both enzyme inhibitor and the enzyme inhibitor substrate complex is possible uh, since enzyme inhibitor substrate complex may be broken to form product at a slower rate 
than does enzyme substrate complex. The reaction is slowed but not halted. So in this type of inhibition, the activity of enzymes may not be blocked, but the reaction rate is lowered because there is no competition between the substrate and the and the inhibitor. The substrate may bind to its active side and the inhibitor bind to other side, but what happens is that the reaction rate is lowered. So the reaction proceeds, but the rate is lowered. So as you can see, the Vmax is affected by the KM, it remains unchanged. So this is a representation, the grammatical representation of how this inhibition works. We have the enzymes. The enzyme may bind the substrate or not. If it binds the substrate, it forms enzyme substrate complex. And because the inhibitor can bind on the other side other than the substrate binding side, so even the enzyme even the enzyme substrate complex can be inhibited by the inhibitors. So even the inhibitor can bind at the enzyme substrate complex. If it bind, if the inhibitor bind at this enzyme substrate complex, it for it lead to the formation of enzyme inhibitor substrate complex. It lead to the formation of enzyme inhibitor substrate complex, and this forms releases the allows the catalysis to take place in the release of the product, but at a, a slower rate. So the Vmax is affected. The rate of reaction is affected. However, when in case the inhibitors fail to bind to the enzyme substrate complex, this reaction proceeds as normal at a normal physiological condition to release uh, the products at its maximum rate. But initially, the enzymes may firstly bind the inhibitors and they form the enzyme inhibitor complex and the uh, enzyme inhibitor complex and in, in enzyme inhibitor complex the substrate can still bind to this complex because the substrate cannot compete with the inhibitor remember the inhibitor has already bound to its site other than the substrate binding site so even the enzyme inhibitor complex can bind the substrate to form enzymes inhibitor substrate and this may lead to the formation of the product but at a, at a slower rate than this uh, first reaction. So this is the first reaction. This is uh, the second one. Provided that the enzyme has bound the inhibitors and then the enzyme inhibitor complex binds the substrate to form enzyme inhibitor substrate and lead to the formation of products. So these two reactions, these two reactions, they differ in terms of the rate of reaction. This proceeded at its higher rate, but this proceeded at its uh, a slower rate. For uh, therefore, for non-competitive inhibition, the Km value is unchanged while the Vmax is lowered. So the, the Km value is unchanged, remain unchanged while the Vmax is lowered. The maximum rate of the enzymatic reactions is lowered. As you can see from this uh, graph here, uh, this uh, green line represents the the reaction between before the inhibitor after the non-competitive inhibitor as you can see the vmax has been shifted the decrease in vmax the v the, the decrease in vmax while the km remain intact and we have the the real real examples of non-competitive inhibitors for example the ethanol uh, or certain narcotic drugs are non-competitive inhibitor of acid phosphatase. We have trypsin inhibitors uh, that occur in soybean and raw egg white. They inhibit the activity of trypsin non-competitively. We have as well as Ascaris parasites, Ascaris worms. Uh, they contain pepsin and a trypsin inhibitors. Uh, and this uh, pepsin and trypsin inhibitors of Ascaris parasite of Ascaris worms inhibit and non-competitively uh, action of pepsin and trypsin. And this explaining why Ascaris worms are not digested in human intestine. This is the key thing to note uh, for you students. This is the key thing to note for you uh, students. Why the Ascaris worms are not digested in human intestine? Because they, has this, they have these pepsin and trypsin inhibitors that competitively inhibit that in non-competitively inhibit the activity of these 
uh, protein digesting enzymes. That's why the scurry's parasites are not digested in human intestine. We have this, the third subtype of reversible inhibitors and competitive inhibitor. We have uncompetitive inhibitor. The uncompetitive inhibitor can bind only to the enzyme substrate complex. So some something to note for uh, to note for you students is that these three subtypes of of reversible inhibitors, the competitive, non-competitive, and the uncompetitive, they have their own key difference in terms of substrate binding or the inhibitor bindings. Remember in a competitive inhibition, we said that the, the substrate and the inhibitor are structurally related to the substrate. So they compete to the same active site. But in a non-competitive, we said that the inhibitor and the substrate are not structurally related. And the inhibitor bind to other site other than substrate binding site. And the inhibitor can bind either in a free enzyme or in an enzyme substrate complex. But here, in a competitive inhibitor, the inhibitor binds only at the enzyme substrate complex. The inhibitor binds only after the enzymes has bind has bonded its substrate. So that's why uh, this type of inhibitor does not affect the affinity for free enzyme. Does not bind the, the, the free enzyme. It affected the affinity of enzyme substrate complex. So, uh, an competitive inhibitor decreases both the Vmax and the KM. That's why this inhibitor, this kind of inhibitors, affect both the Vmax and the KM, the rate of reaction and the KM. And uh, this form of inhibitors occur uh, in those enzymes which act on more than one uh, substrate. As you can see from this graph, from this graph, uh, represented that this shows that this type of one competitive inhibitor affects both the Vmax and the KM. As you can see, the, this green line is before the inhibitor. After the inhibitor, as you can see, the Vmax has been shifted, decreased, and the the, the KM has also uh, lowered, shifted to the to the to the to the left, more negative. And uh, of course, the examples. The real examples here for uncompetitive inhibitor, uh, uncompetitive inhibitors, uh, occurs in certain cancers. For example, alkaline phosphates uh, are overexpressed in certain types of cancers, and those alkaline phosphates, uh, phosphates are often operative, uh, operative via uncompetitive inhibition mechanisms. Also, we have the number of genes that code for human alkaline phosphates uh, which are also inhibited and competitively by certain amino acids the leucines and the phenyl alanine and this this type of inhibitors uh, as you have said have been observed in many uh, cancer related mechanisms in your body systems so let us check on uh, the second, the second group of enzyme inhibitors. Uh, the three subtypes that, that uh, we have discussed briefly uh, in the moment were the subtypes of irreversible inhibitors. Uh, so let us check now the irreversible, irreversible enzyme inhibition, the second type of enzyme inhibition. So as the name suggested, the irreversible inhibitor this binds with the enzyme tightly covalently and the form stable complex the the interaction between this inhibitor and the enzyme is covalently and irreversible it means uh, the action of these inhibitors are not restored uh, that's why the irreversible inhibitor cannot be released uh, by either dilution or dialysis or simply by increasing the concentration of the substrate. The, the binding or the interaction is covalently. Some groups involve the sharing of electrons, so it become very, uh, the inhibitors become uh, become tightly bound uh, to, the, to the enzymes. So it becomes difficult to separate the inhibitors and the enzymes. The dialysis, 
This refers to the, the process of separating the molecules in solution uh, by just the differences in the diffusion rates through the centenable membranes. So it's one of the methods also that is used to separate some of the molecules uh, in solutions by using the centenable membrane. So this irreversible inhibition has also the subtypes. We have three subtypes of irre irreversible inhibition. The irreversible inhibition may be uh, group specific, uh, such as the group specific inhibitors. We have substrate analog inhibitor or affinity labels. We have all, we have also the suicide uh, suicide inhibitor or mechanism based inactivation. So we have these three subtypes of irreversible inhibitors: the group specific inhibitors, uh, substrate analog inhibitor. Or affinity labels we have also the suicide inhibitor or mechanism based inactivation we're going to see briefly uh, to each one so when we compare these irreversible inhibitors uh, we relate to enzyme kinetics they fit or they resemble reversible non-competitive inhibitors because they decrease in vmax they decrease the vmax but have no effect on the km so in terms of enzyme kinetics, irreversible inhibitors affect only the Vmax, but not uh, the KM. So let us check discussing, uh, uh, let us check one after one subtype after the other. The first one is the group specific irreversible inhibitors. Uh, the group specific irreversible inhibitors. As the name suggests, these inhibitors react with the specific R groups or the side chains of amino acid residues in the active site of the enzymes. Remember when we were discussing about the amino acids, uh, we, we, we said that uh, all of the amino acid has these R groups, the side chains that differentiate one amino acid and the other. Other have charged R amino acids, other have uh, uncharged uh, polar R groups, other have aromatic R chains, R side chains, etc. So these inhibitors react with these R groups or side chains of the, most of the amino acids which are found on the active site of the enzymes and they result into uh, inactivation or the inhibition. So we have uh, several examples uh, of uh, specific group specific irreversible inhibitors for example, we have diisopropyl fluorophosphate. This is the potent neurotoxin affecting neurons. Uh, diisopropyl fluorophosphate. Uh, this inhibits the enzyme acetylcholine esterase by covalently reacting with the hydroxyl group of serine residues present in the active site of the of the enzymes. So this. Uh, uh, this molecule, the diisopropyl fluorophosphate, uh, inhibit irreversibly inhibit the acetylcholine esterase uh, by reacting with the hydroxyl group of the serine. Serine is the amino acid, hydroxyl, hydroxyl group containing amino acids, which are found in the active site of the enzymes. So the, the acetylcholine esterase is responsible for deactivation of acetylcholine in a synaptic impulse transmission. So it prevents the overstimulation or the continuous stimulation or the continual uh, uh, passage of the impulses uh, to the effector muscles. So this is the isopropyl fluorophosphate uh, react with the hydroxyl group of, uh, of serine residues in the active site of these enzymes of these enzymes. As you can see, we have acetylcholine. This is the, the messenger, the chemical molecule that crosses the gap to transfer the, the impulse to the postsynaptic membrane. So the acetylcholine is normally broken down immediately after the activation of the, after the passage of the impulse in the, in the synaptic gap. Uh, it is broken down by acetylcholine esterase into acetate and, uh, and the choline. But in the presence of this irreversible group specific inhibitor, the, the potent neurotoxin, uh, the diisopropyl fluorophosphate, uh, 
the action of these enzymes is inactivated. So this represents the the reaction which happens in the active sites. So this this represented the acetylcholine esterase with uh, with the serine serine amino acid uh, serine serine residues in the active site. So this serine amino acid has the the hydroxyl group on its other side chain. So this hydroxyl group is the one that reacts with diisopropyl fluorophosphate and leads to the inactivated acetylcholine esterase enzyme. So this is the irreversible inhibition of acetylcholine esterase by group of specific uh, group specific inhibitor diisopropyl fluorophosphate. So also the diisopropyl fluorophosphate has been found to inhibit many protein digesting enzymes, trypsin, chymotrypsin, elastase, and the phosphoglucomutase. And uh, of course, one of the one of the use of this diisopropyl fluorophosphate uh, was used in, in, in by German uh, during uh, World War II because it is a nerve as a nerve gas because it affected the the muscles the respiratory muscles it causes paralysis and even death because uh, the, the 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 nerves uh, experience continuous stimulation which causes continual uh, contraction and uh, contraction of the muscles which causes further uh, paralysis and even death of the individuals. So it affected the respiratory muscles. So that's why we say it is a potent neurotoxin. Potent, uh, potent neurotoxins. We have also another type, another example of group specific, uh, group specific reversible inhibitors. For example, for example, we have the iodoacetamide and heavy metals iodoacetamide and heavy metals like lead silver and mercury uh, react with the sulfhydryl group of cysteine remember cysteine is another amino acid which is mostly found in the active site of the enzymes so this iodoacetamide and the heavy metals they react with this cysteine has sh group sulfhydryl groups and these sulfhydryl groups of this cysteine, cysteine are the amino acids which are, are found mostly also as serine. They are found also in, in, in most of the active site of the enzymes. So these cysteines have sulfhydryl groups that is reactively uh, with uh, iodoacetamide in the most of the these heavy metals uh, and leads to the inactivation of those enzymes that contain the cysteine residues in the active sites. Uh, the third type of irreversible inhibitors are the substrate analog, the, the substrate analog uh, irreversible inhibitors or affinity labels. The substrate analog irreversible inhibitor or affinity labels. So the substrate analog or affinity labels are molecules that are structurally similar to the substrate. This substrate analog possess highly reactive group which is not present in the natural substrate. substrate. The reactive, the reactive group of substrate, uh, the reactive group of substrate analog covalently react with the amino acid residues of the active site of the enzymes and permanently block the active site of the enzymes. So as you can see, uh, the substrate analog irreversible inhibitors, this has, most, they has more reactive groups that react with uh, the amino acid residues in the active site and permanently block the active site for, for the access of the substrate. For example, we have for example the 3 bromoacetophosphate the BAP. And this BAP is the substrate analog of a normal substrate, uh, the hydroxyacetone phosphate, uh, for the enzyme phosphotriose isomerase of glycolysis. So as I have said that uh, these substrate analog irreversible inhibitors are structurally related to the substrate, but the difference is uh, they are having uh, more reactive groups that react with uh, amino acid residues in the active site and they permanently block the active site uh, for the substrate to bind.
and uh, this is an example the the bulb the bromoacetophosphate uh, which is structurally related to a uh, structural resembles dihydroxyacetone uh, dthap and uh, this dihydroxyacetone dihydro phosphate is normally the substrate for phosphotriose isomerase of glycolysis. So this bulb uh, blocks the phosphotriose isomerase uh, for the access of dihydroxyacetone phosphate. We have suicide inhibitor or mechanism based inactivation. A suicide inhibitor or mechanism based inactivation. So these compounds are relatively unreactive. This is another type of irreversible inhibitor. A suicide inhibitor or mechanism based inactivation. These compounds are relatively unreactive until they bind to the active site of the specific enzyme. So the suicide inhibitors are normally relatively unreactive until they bind to the active site of the enzymes. So upon binding to the active site of the enzymes, they, use, uh, they, they normally use the, uh, the, first, uh, the first few catalytic activities of the, uh, of the normal enzyme reactions in order to be transformed into reactive compounds that combine, combine irreversibly with the enzyme leading to irreversible inhibition. So the, the suicide inhibitors are normally unreactive uh, unre until they bind to the active site of the, sub, of, the, of the enzyme. So when they bind to the active site of the enzymes, they use the first few steps of catalytic activities of the normal enzyme. Uh, in order to be transformed into very reactive compounds and uh, after they have been uh, after they become transformed into the active compounds they react uh, irreversibly with the, en with the enzyme leading to the irreversible inhibition so the enzyme literally commits suicide uh, these are also called the mechanism based inactivations because they utilize normal enzyme reactions to inactivate the enzyme so the suicide inhibitors uses the normal enzyme mechanisms uh, to inactivate the enzymes they bind it to the active sites uh, they become transformed by enzymatic activities into the more reactive compounds and thereafter they inhibit the the irreversibly inhibit such an enzyme that's why they are called the uh, that's why they are called the mechanism based inactivators uh, most of the drugs uh, falls in this most antibacterial, antibacterial, antimicrobial drugs fall in suicide inhibitors. For example, we have penicillin. This penicillin is irreversibly is an irreversible inhibitor of glycopeptidyl transpeptidase. Uh, glycopeptidyl transpeptidase. This is the enzyme that is responsible for the formation of cross links. In, in the bacterial cell walls. So this enzyme is responsible for the formation of bacterial cell walls. And this cell, bacterial cell walls is very important uh, when it comes to the uh, prevention of the bacterial lysis due to the osmotic pressures. So the penicillins uh, irreversibly inactivate the, these enzymes which is responsible for the formation of bacterial cell walls. Eventually, there will be no further bacterial wall, uh, bacterial cell wall synthesis. So, the and the, this leads to the bacterial lysis due to the osmotic pressures, uh, due to the osmotic pressure. So we have aspirin, a uh, anti pain drug. Uh, anti -pain, you, you, it is normally used as anti pain uh, because it blocks the the release of pro, uh, prostaglandins, which are the are the molecules that are associated with uh, pain and inflammations. So the aspirin uh, irreversibly inactivates the enzyme cyclooxygenase, uh, which is which catalyzes the first reaction in the biosynthesis of prostaglandins from arachidonic acid. So the the aspirin uh, irreversibly inactivates the cyclooxygenase. Uh, the cyclooxygenase is normally uh, catalyze the first reaction in the biosynthesis of prostaglandins from arachidonic acid. Uh, remember that the prostaglandins are these molecules uh, which are released the following after you have got an injury 
and uh, of course they are responsible for the pain that you feel after you get some injury so that's why we use aspirin as a reliever of pain because it block the synthesis of these prostaglandins by blocking cyclo by blocking the activity of cyclooxygenase enzyme and the cyclooxygenase enzyme as we have said it is responsible for the biosynthesis of these uh, pain related molecules or, or the inflammatory related uh, molecules prostaglandins from arachidonic acid we have the uh, disulfiram the anti abuse disulfiram or the anti abuse is used as an anti alcohol anti chronic alcoholism it's the drug used in the treatment of alcoholism because it inhibits irreversibly uh, the activity of aldehyde dehydrogenase aldehyde dehydrogenase and uh, this uh, aldehyde dehydrogenase uh, is the en is the enzyme that is responsible for the formation for the conversion of acetaldehyde into acetic into the acetic acid so uh, the, the, the this disulfiram the anti abuse inhibit irrever irreversibly uh, aldehyde dehydrogenase uh, which is the enzyme uh, aldehyde uh, dehydrogenase enzyme resulting in the accumulation of acetaldehyde in the body the accumulation of the acetaldehyde in the tissues leading to the alcohol avoidance as you can see from this uh, flow uh, flow chart uh, flow diagram uh, where after the consumption of the alcohol the alcohol the alcohol dehydrogenase convert the alcohol into the acetaldehyde so the aldehyde dehydrogenase convert the acetaldehyde into the acetic acid in the presence of this anti abuse disulfiram it inhibits the activity of aldehyde dehydrogenase so there will be no further conversion of acetaldehyde into the acetic acid so there will be no accumulation of acetic acid or no conversion of acetaldehyde so this disulfiram uh, it is used in the treatment of chronic alcoholism uh, by producing the uh, anacute sensitivity to ethanol uh, because the accumulation so after the block since the disulfiram block the activity of aldehyde aldehyde dehydrogenase so there will be accumulation of acetaldehyde in the body because it is not going to be converted into acetic acid due to the blockage or the inactivation of aldehyde dehydrogenase so the accumulation of acetaldehyde leads to uh, increase in factors uh, in the effects of hangovers to be felt uh, immediately after the comp consumption of the of the alcohol so it is used as anti anti alcoholism uh, anti abuse due to this activity of blocking the activity of aldehyde dehydrogenase so the clinical applications of enzyme inhibitors as we have said this is just a summary we have said that uh, of course we're going to see also in table 6.4 uh, clinical application of enzyme inhibitors enzyme inhibitors have therapeutic applications most antibiotics uh, anti-cancer drugs that are used therapeutically are either competitive inhibitors or mechanism based suicide inhibitors and as you can see here we have a summary effective inhibitors on kinetic properties of enzymes we have a type of inhibitor effect on KM and effect on Vmax all of the irreversible inhibitors does not affect the KM but it decreases the Vmax as I have explained Irreversible inhibitors, uh, we have reversible competitive, increases the KM, but has no effect on Vmax. Reversible non-competitive uh, does not affect the KM, but it decreases the Vmax. Reversible anti-competitive decreases both the KM and the Vmax. And this is the, the summary, the table that shows the summary of commonly used drugs. Uh, that are enzyme inhibitors we have drugs for example the mevinolin this is the competitive the, the effect its inhibition effect is competitive it competitively 
inhibit the 3 hydrox 3 methyl glutaryl COA reductase and this is used in uh, control or regulation of hypercholesterolemia uh, control of hyper or high accumulation of over accumulation of uh, cholesterol in your body we have also the this was in uh, uh, mevinolin lovastatin uh, as we have said we have allopurinol this is a competitive drug that affects xanthan oxidase and this is the responsible for control of gout the over accumulation of uric acid in the joints we have methotrexate uh, of course the its effect is competitive competitively inhibiting uh, uh, dehydrofolate reductase uh, this is, is used in control of cancer uh, the uncontrolled and unregulated growth and controlled cell divisions uh, these enzymes xanthine oxidase uh, thiamide synthase and the dehydrofolate reductase are the enzymes that are, are mostly uh, involved in the synthesis of nucleotides we have five fluorophosphate this is the suicide inhibitor uh, it inhibits the thiamide synthase, uh, which also is used the therapeutically in cancer uh, management. We have aspirin, uh, which is operated also as a suicide inhibitor of cyclooxygenase as anti anti inflammatory or anti pain drug. We have penicillin, as you have said, this is a suicide inhibitor of bacterial transpeptidase. Uh, the bacterial transpepti uh, transpeptidase as we have said uh, and the therapeutic is used as an antibacterial antibacterial drug so guys this is just the uh, the summary or the the concept the key concepts in enzyme inhibition uh, thank you very much for following this lecture and uh, i wish you uh, the nice day